All right, uh, so let's uh, just take a look at two opportunities that present, I think more than two opportunities presented themselves. So let's just uh, take a look at um, what they were and all of that. All right. So as you know, the ES, um, in the morning, it was total shit show because you just can't figure out what it's doing in the, in the morning. So for example, because of uh, Jackson Hole and all that. So it, it uh, broke out, but it went um, and did a deep pullback, and then it took out the high. After that it reversed, it set up, um, when it came back here, there was some uh, redistribution here. I can't find uh, whatever, so uh, basically it's right here. As redistribution and a break. This is interesting because uh, they did so, when they did the redistribution and a break, it didn't really uh, test right away. It didn't test right away and it uh, continued made a low low. As it made a low low, it came back into this redistribution block right here. This is the redistribution base break all of that comes back tests right right into the distribution and there was only a very small opportunity I would consider this more like a break-even trade but it went in here and it tested and after that it went the other way so because it's hard to see but the the buyers came in right there that print is very large. It's the biggest print in this downtrend. So when they did that, when it when it um, breaks down, remember someone else is taking the other side. So you know they just did bag holding and opened the bag for everyone to sell in it and went the other way. After that, uh, the buyers. And these buyers just took it up, took out the high, and here's what happened. When they pull back, this is down the reaccumulation proved by this movement. So in this area, there's reaccumulation. Why they pull back, they hold, and then they go. So after that, this was the real trade that it went and it pulled back to test. But this is not an easy trade because it, it basically almost retested the, the low before the high. A very uh, challenging trade and because um, it's a very uh, a deep pullback. So I mean, you just, the, the, let's just say it's a very challenging trade. And also you cannot see the high volume prints because today the movement was too fast. Or, you know, it's probably because of the new news event day. But anyway, rally, pull back, retest, pulls back into the reaccumulation and then goes crazy. This was the end of the day and it was really nice. I mean, you know, you have the, it, these are nothing more than pull back, break out, retest, continuation. That's all it is. Rally, pull back, break down, test, works a little bit, doesn't work a lot, goes the other way, so on and so forth. So. But that's there is structure to the market and this is how it looks. So this was the opportunity here. Um, and I'll show you how it looks in the wave chart. And what were the, you, you, remember you always combine this thing with the wave chart. And what I'm doing here is the Wyckoff method, like re legit Wyckoff method. All right, he used the wave chart and he used this. So I use both because he used both because that's what I know. So now you're gonna look at something here. Now, when I'm looking at this, right there, all right? 100,000 contracts test this supply zone or supply area. You, a lot of the Forex guys call it supply zone or whatever. You know, it's so in that area, it pulls back. But when it pulled back, I knew something was wrong. 
uh, with the supply because this 100K is more than 69K. And it re rallied again on 90K. So the buyers are definitely there. Now they die out right here because of whatever reason, probably because there's supply area and nobody wants to take out supply here. And these guys over here, they do some distribution. Now here is the key. Whether it's at a supply zone, whether it's whatever, right? You have to <coughs> look at what's going on from that resistance, excuse me, from that resistance area. All right, so it's at resistance. I'm trying to figure out whether they're gonna blow it out or is it gonna continue downwards in the direction of this big volume. Here is the key, pay close attention. How much volume comes out? 30,000. How much volume comes out again? 23,000. How much volume comes out a third time? 20,000. Do you see a problem with supply pressure? It is decreasing on every attempt to go down. You know why? This demand here is too strong. And this supply here is not there. This supply could have broken this area if it was much more, I mean, if this was 30, then this was, say, 50, then, then you, you know, it's increasing on the, on the down moves and it would have broken the low. It would have broken the low. But the fact that there's 190 in the background and only pulling back on 30 and 23 and 20 was the key to understanding that this move was going to come, this big move. This big move right here. And I don't know how, but they actually took out the <laughs> this high up up here, all the there's a lot of uh, pissed off people because they would have shorted and put their stop up up here. Right? They're shorting, they're probably getting on the sell it here and the stop above here. And this move because when they shorted, there's no selling, no selling, no selling, or actually decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. The, the buyers took out the high. All right. So here's the point that I'm trying to make. And again, pay attention because if you get this in your decision making process and make it like, you know, uh, you'll be able to see what's going on under, in a dynamic way. When this market, let's say this is the rally, that's the origin of the rally. So most folks will call this a supply zone, this red bar, because it's the start of the down rally, the, the bear rally. So they're going to look for some test. Market does test it, but you need to see the reaction at the time of a test of a supply or a demand zone. And I saw very clearly that this, this, this is weak. Is weak. Not only is it weak, but it is decreasing from 30 to 23 to 20. If you can see that clearly, then you have to ask yourself, when it tested the supply zone of that big up thrust bar, that pin bar or whatever it is, ham inverted hammer, you know, whatever this, you wanna call it the selling, the origin of the selling, why is it that there is no supply? And ask yourself that when it tested, are you getting a change of behavior? 
Are you getting a bearish change of behavior? You're not getting a bearish change of behavior. You are not getting heavy supply pressure. It's not going to um, go down. If you're not getting that, the buyers will step in after, especially after multiple tests, to do another rally higher. And in this case, that's what happened. This is why I'm showing you why it is so important to see volume and a lot of what you see um, online and all that, they're not using the most, uh, the, the, you know, the volume. So how, how I don't know, it, it, it just, it's dumbfounded um, that it, this is the, you know, how are you going to quantify supply if you can't see the volume? I don't know. So this is the key, the shrinking volume here. Look, you see a problem? From that area, when the market came back, this is good volume, uh, 100,000 contracts. But look at the supply on this pullback, pullback, pullback. So for sure, it's going to take out the high. <sighs> all right. Now, I didn't know it was going to go all the way up here and wipe these guys, but this was good. And then, you know, you're, you're not just looking at one chart. In the white curve method, you use the wave chart and the tape reading chart together. I don't know why this is not being done, but this is what Wyckoff taught. I'm showing you exactly what he taught and what he would do today, you know, with the, uh, with this, with what he had. I mean, this is what he did. So, uh, what am I, what I'm doing? So, so you have, you had this, this base break, right? And accumulation must have been in the background, and it is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six lines here initiating. The other thing you want to make, uh, uh, the other thing you want to um, here, eighteen, right? Is um, can't find this. There it is. All right. So this, the other thing is right there, right? You see these high volumes? This volume is breaking these highs. Again, that's 17 and 18 increases, right? So the first thing is uh, you have to make a judgment. What is that? Is there supply, overhead supply, right? Because it, it's, you know, you buy low, sell high at the top of the column. If you have the highest prints, there's something possibly wrong if you're along because the supply is coming in. Unless, unless there is a resistance level. Because you see this resistance in the background, this is a demand wiping out this supply, meaning it's clearing it, it's absorbing it, it's taking it out. When it takes it out, it clears the path to go higher, meaning the demand is overcoming the supply. It absorbed it. It took it out, whatever. It took it out, making the, what is it? The, 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 making a path to go higher, all right? Now, after they do that, they tie it and they come back to test. It's actually reaccumulation, but. Whatever. So they come back to test and go back into that reaccumulation area, and demand is now low enough such that buyers who who were here, who did this, step in, and they run it. Where did they step in? This, right? Now I'm not I'm not gonna say that this is evident uh, at the time, so I'm not gonna say that because it's not. You might be thinking it's going to that's volume absorbing this support in order to break it, right? 
So that's a possibility, but that is actually the other side coming in. As the man coming in, it's not clear. It's not clear until this bar. But this is clear because of, you know, the, you have all the overhead su uh, supply. It's, just, it's breaking that level, so you need, always need volume on the break. The other area over here, when it takes out this, these highs, right, you have it right there. You see the structure of how support and resistance and demand and supply interact around support and resistance levels. It's very important to see that clarity because they're, they're clearing the path to go higher. So buy the fucking pullbacks, right? This one not clear, this little bit clear, right? Like right here, the nine. Right here, the 10. Anyway, so that, I mean, that's that's just the supply and demand pressure. So anyway, let's go to uh, crude because crude total wipeout disaster uh, for, uh, for longs. So I'll show you. Okay, the first thing is we're just gonna analyze this move down. I know later on in the day, you know, uh, demand came in, right? So, but this move here, this move here, I'm going to go into that. All right. The first thing is you have selling in the background. You have selling in the background. It pulls back and tests and all that, and it's going to give you an opportunity now. All right. So. Remember, I only, I'm, lo I'm looking for continuation trades and turning point trades. Those are only two trades you need. All right. And you just get really good with them and you'll know what you're doing. So here, show you right here what, what's going on. Market on the left-hand side is going up, 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 up. But here, it climaxes. That's 8,800 next to 8,400, 6,600 or 6,600. Basically, a lot of distribution up here. All right. Now it does an upthrust after the distribution and a break below it. Beautiful. Because that's what I want to see in a base. I want to see high volumes. I want to see sideways. I want to see attempts to go higher, you know, in, in distribution that fail, making an upthrust and then break. After that, it came back perfectly. And look at this beauty when it broke look at this you see that look at that up thrust look at up that up thrust after the climax is selling and the fall through comes back, wipes these guys out, up thrust them, and has a fall, fall through down bar. Okay? And comes back for a test and a retest and a another test and then even another test. Keeps coming back. So, by the way, to trade this type of thing, right? You have to understand that once you're in it and you go to break even, do not touch the trade. You will mess it up. This type of trade is the one that, you know, once you get in, you put your stop in your target. If you try to move it, you know, move the stops up and down, like getting closer and all that, you're not going to do too good because it keeps coming back to test the same area. And why? Because it's a high volume area. That's the real reason. After that, this after this trigger, because this trigger, you have to understand what wicks really mean. Wicks are important not because they make patterns. Wicks are important because given a certain amount of time, it shows that within that time, one side failed. 
So in this case, they went all the way up and then all the way down. Supply made all of that um, demand fail. That wick here is demand failure. Again, wicks are demand failure over here on this up thrust. It means it's the failure on the part of demand. That's what it means. And a lot of times they get tested and offering the opportunity like over here again, you had this uh, wick right here, right? Against this area, this is a supply area with a break, got tested, wicked up, came back to close below, meaning in five minutes, the demand tried to go up, but failed and supply took it all the other way. It gets retested and this thing happens. And then finally, one more attempt here, test. And surprisingly, it came back here and broke, broke and took out the weekly low and the overnight low. I wasn't expecting that, but I, actually I was expecting it to do this. I didn't expect it to go all the way down here. It's not that far and do, do this reversal. However, on the higher time frame, they did show that they're creating some level of support. See this? This is a support level. So anyway, so what do you want to learn from this? Is um, distribution tops. How distribution top, how distribution top, it goes up, high volume, bases out, breaks. When you have a base break with volume trapped, has an up thrust, that, that's how uh, distributions look. And accumulations also have that, but with a spring. So here you have the distribution very clear where you have the white boxes and all that, you know, supply, 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 it goes up, breaks it and uh, gets tested. And the other thing is um, the importance of those pullbacks to test up thrusts, right? The up thrust will take out the uh, prior high and reverse down, offering the entry opportunity. But once you're in, don't touch the trade. And let it... Uh, Better work. This is actually kind of difficult uh, trade because it, it, the ability to go all the way back, the ability to go all the way back will take out your break evens. Meaning, if you're in right here and after this red bar, chances are your stop will be moved from the high of the up thrust to a break even level. Because of that, it is in jeopardy to be get taken out right here on this wick. This wick takes out all the break evens that are break evens due to this bar. This bar will make you do one of two things. Either move your stop uh, at break even or above its high. Chances are the stops were above the high of this big red bar, which is exactly where this wick went to take out the to take out the stops above that high, get retested, and break. And then if you're getting in here. Let's say, you know, let's say you got on this reversal right here, right? That's why the, this is why it's hard to trade this particular thing. If if you got in here, close, let's say you, you know, got in on the close. Market goes down, but this market comes all the way back. And if you moved your stop to your entry, which was the close of the bar, it got taken out again at that break-even level with all of this. 
So this is a very challenging trade, um, trade management, simply because of the pullbacks. Pullbacks are too deep. They're going into the quote unquote supply zones, which are the origin of the rallies. See, like over here, this is the origin of this down move. Gets tested, tested, tested. This supply gets tested here and then breaks. So bottom line is that you just have to, um, yeah, I mean, you have to take the break even. And uh, if it's reversing, you know how to get back in. All right. So these are the two trades that set up on um, Friday, today, and there's going to be more again on Monday. <laughs> Take care. Bye.